guys. Uh, welcome to Hindsight 2020, a musical retrospective. This is a podcast where we talk about albums that we feel are culturally significant or significant to their particular genre. Today, we are discussing um, The Swellers, Good For You. This album was suggested by panelist uh, Joel Alexander. But before we get to him, let's introduce all the members of the, po- of the panel. As always, we have my co-host here, Arnold Trevino. How you doing, bro? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Not too bad. Oh, oh like like that that whole thing. <laughs> and Omega, bro. Yo, bro. <laughs> and uh, right under him, we've got uh, our recurring panelist here. He was on last week's episode. We have Patrick Vasquez. How you doing, brother? Chilling, man. Ready, ready to talk about this record. We're gonna have a lot of fun with y'all. All right, dope, dope. And then last but not least, our featured guest of the night. He suggested this album. Uh, one of my favorite graphic designers. We work on a comic strip together. Uh, he designed my tattoo, so I'm rocking his work on me forever. Give it up for Joel Alexander. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. And uh, yes, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about this record. We are going to be discussing the swellers good for me i always want to say good for you because that's what rolls off the pump <laughs> yeah nope it's a uh, good for me so this album is a pop punk record uh released on june 14th 2011 uh let's uh get into opening thoughts on the record just a brief overview of where your head's at in regards to this album uh mm-hmm. Arnold, lay, lay it on him lay, lay it on us <laughs> uh, all right well i will say you know um I, mean, I don't fancy modern day pop punk as much. I think I kind of fell off after, after like you know when I was younger, uh, and then like Warped Tour kind of got under my skin. And you know this album is uh, just straight ahead pop punk for me, and it's okay. It's, it, it may be good for them, but not for me. So I'll just say that. All right. All right. Uh, Patrick, thoughts on uh, on this record? Thoughts on good for you? I mean, go, it's good for me. God good, damn. yes, no, it's okay. It's okay. It like I said, rolls <laughs> off the tongue. Uh, but no, it's it's a great record. Um, I had never heard the Swellers prior to this, so uh, it was good to be able to listen to you know a pop punk record that so many people love, and you know, um, that's on a great label. You know, it's on Field by Ramen, is written by two brothers, um, and yeah, great songs, great opener, great closer um and it's a lot of fun you know it's i it's very it defines i think that time you know with warp tour and all that stuff that was going on so i mean it's a it's a good record and i can't wait to to get more in depth into it dope dope joel uh this is your record you suggested it what what are your thoughts uh opening thoughts on uh good good for me well it's one of my favorite records of all time i think it was very refreshing i mean like it, it got like a, a, a strong pop punk vibe uh, for 2011. Sort of other bands were trying to do like a lot of breakdowns. You know, they were stuck uh, on the easy core side of things. And I think uh, the Swellers Good for me was actually like, uh, like you know, breathing like something really good. Like it was, I don't know, man, like um, good opening song, good closing song, everything, um, great choruses, just like you said. Um, prior to get, getting started, they, they do have like a lot of structure, structure um, based on '90s pop punk bands. I know they one of their biggest influences were Bad Religion and uh, Misfits. Um, Bill Stevenson, Descendants drummer, where was actually the the, um, the producer on this album. So you you might have like a, a bit, you you might feel a, a bit of insight from the descendants and bands like that so i think it's pretty cool one of my favorite records of all time for sure all right yeah yeah so uh my thoughts on the record i am of two minds when it comes to this album i love it in the sense that it is a good fun serviceable blueprint pop punk record uh one of our guests from last week actually uh fernando martinez When we talked to him about doing this record, he mentioned that this is blueprint pop punk. And I wasn't ready for him to mean that. So literally when I when I heard it, I was like, holy shit, this is the most pop punk album I've heard in a while. And I am of two thoughts about it. On the one hand, I love pop punk. So 
a good pop punk record is a great pop punk record to me. It, it's super fun. It, it it hits all the marks. But on the other hand, it's the the one thing that makes me love it is also the one thing that is bad for it because it's too pop punk. You know, it 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 very rarely colors outside the lines of the genre. So that's what made it a little harder for me to really really get into it because everything about it feels like something I've heard before. It, it all sounded very, very of its time, very, very pop punk. And one of my, actually my favorite track on this record, which we'll get into, is the one that is the least pop punk because mm -hmm. it felt so refreshing outside of the overall pop punk formula. So it works for a pop punk record. It's a really good pop punk record. I just wish they would have deviated from that a little more, maybe been a little more creative in some spots, but as a pop punk record, it works. It, it works as a pop punk record, but uh, let's get into the tracks. Let, let's talk to understand more what I mean about that or what we all kind of think. Let's get into the individual tracks. Right now, we are going to start with the opener, which we have all said is a strong, strong opener. Runaways. Arnold, what are your thoughts on Runaways? Okay, so my thoughts on Runaways, it's definitely like a nice and strong opener. Uh, really pigeonholed pop punk. You know, you got some good guitar, you got some good drums on there, but it feels like almost like I'm reading a Mad Lib comic or I'm writing a Mad <laughs> Lib comic because it's like, it, 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 it kind of is a, a whole like blank slate pop punk where it's like, hey, I'll just do the same thing. I'll just add a noun here, do a verb here, adjective here. Um, <laughs> so it does do a good job in laying the good foundation of a straight ahead pop punk song. So, uh, okay song like i'm gonna say that for most of these songs it's very straight ahead straightforward and i'm not doing a lot of thinking um i appreciate that on one hand but on the other hand you know give me something different uh something that's palatable in my opinion this is just vanilla i like, I like that <laughs> vanilla <Okay. laughs> uh patrick thoughts on uh on runaways um it's for me, it's a perfect opening song. Like, that opening guitar riff is so fucking great. Like, it honestly is, you know, it, it works so well. Like, I can, I can see, you know, like I said, why people love this record so much. I can see this song being played live and the crowd going crazy for it, you know, like, as soon as it goes into it and, like, I think everyone would go crazy for it. Um, it's one of the catchier songs on the album, I would like to say. Um, uh yeah and i think it sets a, a really good pace for the record um yeah it's like I, I really love the song like frank and i were saying like as like we were listening to it earlier today while we were working and you know like just like I said that opening riff is just so <laughs> sick and i love it Joel, uh thought on the well, opening track uh i agree a lot with patrick it, it um it is super straightforward it has a, a great guitar riff it is just a great opening song and it sets the the mood for the whole record so um so yeah i mean it's one of my favorite songs of the album honestly um but yeah i mean like it's super straightforward the whole the whole record is super straightforward so uh, i think it's really good i like it <laughs> you're you're gonna hear a lot of positive um, insights on this record for me because I really love this record. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you chose it. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's what we're here for. We're here to share our opinions on the record. Uh, I'll get into my thoughts on this track. Runaways, uh, perfect opener. It's a little eerie to me how this uh, opening track is called Runaways. And a few episodes back, we talked about Carly Rae Jepsen's Emotion and the mm -hmm. opening track is called Run Away With Me. <laughs> so... Runaways as an album opener is seems to be a popular theme, so uh, that's cool. Um, I love this track. Uh, again, one of our earlier guests had told me that this album was blueprint pop punk, and the opening riff started to give me that feeling that nostalgia feeling of like, yeah, this is pretty pop punk, but then I hear the opening line to the song, which is uh. I don't feel like me anymore or something like that. I don't feel like I'm me anymore. And I was like, holy shit, why are my pants khaki shorts now? You know, like I'm like, I was like, yes, this is very pop punk. So yeah, it sets the mood. You're ready to start, start two stepping. 
You know, you're putting on a flannel shirt. You're grabbing some pizzas with the boys. You're gonna the talk boys. about how much you, you're, you're gonna the talk boys. about how the much boys. you hate the your boys. hometown. You know, like all of it is there. All of it is there. Uh, but it's also in this song where I kind of start to notice one of my biggest problems with the record. And I'll get into this in one of the in some of the other songs, which is that. The, the lyrics are very low stake on this album. It, it never really gets too personal. Everything in these songs are pretty vague. And that's weird to me when, you know, this era of pop punk kind of the, the hallmark of the, of, of the genre at this point is its vulnerability. It's very personal stories. It's connection. It's intimacy with the listener. And I didn't really feel that in this song, but I thought to myself, well, you know, it's just the opener. You know, this is kind of like a, hey, get in the mood, get to jump in type song. Maybe you'll hear it on the next track. And that being said, let's get into how that didn't happen on the next track. Let's go with... Uh, <laughs> let's Already get into talking in smack on it. <laughs> let's get into Inside My Head. Arnold, your thoughts on Inside My Head. Let's get those thoughts outside your head let's get into all it. right i like so that. getting inside my head uh with inside my head i will say the only positive i got in this song was that it had a pretty catchy chorus um but it wasn't catchy like newfound glory catchy it was kind of like mediocre catchy but still good enough um i will say like it, this is where i can kind of tell like hey yeah modern pop punk that did, did kind of stem stem from this because uh, it's kind of blurred where you can see the classic and modern day pop punk. Um, and I could say, hey, maybe I could safely say that this is on the line, if not the line of the, of, you know, modern pop punk. Um, so the only thing I really liked was the catchy chorus. Um, that was about it. Uh, nothing, nothing too uh, risky in this song uh, that kind of like makes you jump on your head type thing. So, hmm. Agreed. I, I, okay. I agree okay. with that. Valid, valid, valid points. Uh, Pat, you, you don't want to elaborate in any in any way. We got uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got an hour and fifteen minutes to kill Patrick. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're, sure. you're slowing up. Um, the I think it has a great drum track. Um, it keeps the pace going from the first track. Um, it's a good pop song, and I really like the vocal melody of it. Like you said, it's it's very formulaic. You know, like it's it's pop punk to the core and like i mean there's not much else beyond that you know but um i think it's a little generic you know so it's not one of my favorite tracks on the record but like i said it's a good pop song um the drums are fantastic it's like I, i'll keep saying this throughout the entire review of the record is the best thing for me is the instrumental tracks which are all fantastic they got great riffs great you know beats to it so you know Good song, but not fantastic. It's not something that I would, you know, say like, hey, you know what? Inside my head, that's something you need to, and it's going to stay inside your head because it's most probably not. So, mm. all right. Uh, well, uh, here's where I start to agree uh, with you, Franny and Arnold. Uh, this seems to be like um, Runaways Part 2. It, it does feel like connected in some way, but like, not lyrically, but and, and it has just the same mood. It could have been just as as good as uh, as an opener song. I don't know if I, uh, you know what I'm saying. Like it could have just worked just yeah. fine, either uh, Runaways or or Inside My Head, which was uh, actually the second single of this album. And um, yeah, it's sort of like it's super straightforward. I do like uh, the guitar riff there again <laughs> and um i don't know yeah. i mean I, gu I guess um i mean lyrically speaking i know for sure this song got me through a lot back in the day so i owe it a lot i, I owe a lot to this song to this band in general so but i don't know I, mean, I just i think it's a good song but i i see where you guys are heading uh it's super repetitive the same formula you know intro cars introverse cars uh bridge then final cars and stuff i don't know it's it's super generic i start i i, I have just yeah. started to, to 
to see that, you know. Prior to this, I was like, I, I love this album. I really love this. I, I, I enjoy every, every, every song. But now, I, I mean, I kind of started to feel like, yeah, it's very straightforward, super generic. There's no much uh, difference between tracks. But I still like it. I, I think it's a good song. Do you feel like you kind of matured from, like, this album? Like, now that there's other music out there, you kind of, like, you're like, okay, I can put this off to the side, but I'm grown up enough to, like... Oh, yeah, of like, course. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah. But, see, like, yeah. the, the good thing that you that you said, Hul, is that, like, you know, it, it has a nostalgic value for you, you know? Like, when the record did come out and when you, like, I'm sure when you first listened to it, like, it meant a lot to you, which is good, because it's always good to have, you know, like, that personal connection and that, you know that view for the songs, you know, cause I mean, e each song takes a life of its own for, for each individual person, which is great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, it, it's uh, surprising and welcome to hear that you found the personal connection to the song, because this is again, where I start to notice musically. I love the track. I, I love the music in it. Uh, I'm a sucker for all things pop pump. The, the verses, the, the rhythm section and the verses is fucking great. Gets me up, gets me hyped. The chorus, catchy as hell, but lyrically, that's like, again, there's one of those songs where I'm just like, the lyrics leave more questions than they do answers, you know, like, uh, they're, they're very vague as to what they're saying. And uh, like I said, it, it, it's one of the weirdest things about this record to me, because again, pop punk in this era really works, you know, it, it gained the acclaim that it did because of how personal these bands were willing to get, you know, bands like Real Friends, Story So Far, or my favorite band of this new wave of pop punk, The Wonder Years. You know, the, the Wonder Years can get hyper specific with their lyrics. And even then you, you can still relate, you know, like uh, it is putting it all out there. Whereas, you know, the chorus to the song, I wish you could see inside my head uh, to, uh, what is it? To, to answer all the things. I wish you could see inside my head to answer the questions yeah. that you said. Yeah, to answer all the questions that you've said. It's like, what are the questions, man? What are the <laughs> questions? What are the answers? I have no fucking clue. <laughs> and then you have a song by like, you know, you have a song by The Wonder Years where Soupy will immediately say, you know, I don't want my kids growing up to be anything like me. You know, it's like hyperly mm -hmm. honest, hyperly specific, you know, and, you know, that's kind of what I've been, like, that's what I, and, you know, maybe this is my own personal bias because that is what I love about, you know, modern pop punk is, you know, that fearlessness to be that vulnerable, to be that personal. And I found myself having a hard time connecting to the songs on this record because it was, the lyrics are very, very vague. You're going to hear me say this a lot. You know, the lyrics are very vague on the record. It, 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 tells you enough that you know that there's something going on but you have to fill in a lot of the blanks and now maybe that's a positive for some people it was a positive for joel you know you could kind of project your own situations to these records but i don't know it it, it was harder for me to connect with it because yeah. i i'm i feel like i don't really know what's going on in this time. i i i i get the idea that there's a problem here you know, I, I get the idea that something's happening, but mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. You know, it's yeah. like watching a movie. It's like hearing the story of a movie, but just getting like the vaguest details. Like it's hard to get invested when you know so little. And yeah. I really noticed that in this song and the next song as well. And that's what kind of took me out of the record. As far as I think Franny is kind of lagging, you know, cutting up, a little, cutting up a little bit, but it's okay. But you know, this I, being an album that I potentially love, you know, I like it for me to. Yeah, I think he's the the victims of the Um, uh, but, uh, going to, to what Frank was saying are, right now. Are you guys still good? Are you guys seeing me? Listen, you uh, we, of, I you can't hear you very well. Breaking up, Fran. Um, Warm. Let's get into the next track. Wait, before we get into the next uh, track, real quick, I just want to add something. <laughs> Go for it. Go for okay. it, Patrick. Um, I, 
the thing that Frank was saying, you know, about how it's very vague and stuff like that. I think that's a good thing because, oh, dang, Frank's gone. Um, it's but right. it's, it's good because you don't always need that. Um, you don't need that openness to it, you know, like everything pretty much goes on a concept sometimes, you know, like, oh, this is what it's supposed to be. But tracks like this. You know, while the lyrics may not be very strong, it's uh, very open-ended and it gives your own interpretation to the songs. And, like, with the vagueness comes, you know, what should be there, you know? Issues here. Uh, what track? Are we talking about the next track already? The next no, no, no. Uh, I, I, no oh, okay. Go ahead, Arnold. Patrick was elaborating a little bit more on the song, so if you want to finish it up. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah like, go ahead. Like, just like, like how we were saying uh, last week on the Code Orange episode, you know, like, everything fits into like the concept of what they do and how they like project their band. But this is, you know, it's just, it's pop punk the way pop punk should be. It should be fun. It should be like, not everything should have a meaning to it. You know, like it's like classic Blink-182, you know, yeah. like they're just, they're fun songs for the sake of being fun, which I absolutely love. I mean, like I said, not necessarily with this track, but you know, with the whole record as, as a whole. It's just yeah, good it vibes, sense. you know, stage dives and, uh, and, <laughs> and high fives. And high fives. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> so Franny's actually got... Uh, oh, that, oh, that's, uh, stage dives, right high fives, and good vibes. <laughs> that's the motto. That, that's the motto, the motto, dude. Motto of pop punk. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so uh, we can go into the next song. Yep. Yeah. Real quick. The damage. Real quick, shout out to Vanessa Seca for uh, painting that for me. Vani, uh, love you. <laughs> she's dope as fuck, and I love oh, yeah. her. Uh, the next track, The Damage. The Damage. Uh, Arnold, thoughts on this track? Okay, so this is a third time that we get another straight ahead pop punk song. <laughs> and I definitely, you know, I just kind of want to stop the album once I'm listening to this. Um, but, you know, as as a good uh, interviewer or in, good uh, host, co-host, I need to do my due diligence and listen to the whole thing. But uh, it did, like, after this, I kind of took a break. And I was like, you know, I need to, like, you know, it's too posse for me. Let me listen to something else real quick and I'll come right back into it. But um, I, I will also add, during this song, I got a little bit of hints of Foo Fighters for some reason. And this is before I started reading other people's reviews because I like to listen to the album by itself first then mm -hmm. come up with my stuff and i did hear a little bit of food fighters in this and i can't really put my thumb right on it you know <laughs> um and i learned later on that they did have some sort of influence on the food fighters and why do you say why why do you yeah, think the record was so popular because the food fighters are huge man <laughs> <laughs> so that my take right. is is i need to take a break from this album that's the like <laughs> at this point <laughs> Okay, uh, Patrick, thoughts on uh, on the damage? Hard agree with Arnold. Like I, like I, said, I wrote my notes on the album while I was listening to it, and it, the first thing that I wrote is it sounds the same. Like it sounds the same as the last track. You know, the best part about it is, like I said, the guitar riff, which I'm gonna keep talking about. The it's it's not a dud, but it's probably the weakest track for me so far. Um, but, you know, it just it doesn't do too much for me. And it's not it's definitely not something that I would go back to, you know, because it's, you know, once again, it's very formulaic. You know, it's I think it's what people want to hear. I, I can see why Fueled by Ramen signed them and I can see what they were going for. But like it's it falls kind of flat. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Uh, well, I have to admit, I do skip this track every once in a while. Like, I just go straight ahead to the next track. Because this one, I, I think it's it has the same vibe. But I don't know. I feel like it's it gets a bit sadder, sadder than the previous yeah. tracks. And I'm all about the posse jumps, you know? So <laughs> this one starts to, to you know, to, to feel much of a, like a downer. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to skip this track to the next one. And, um, yeah, I mean, they do know how to write good guitar riffs that's i mean we're gonna keep saying that track by track i, I guess this, yeah. the guitar riffs are are really cool are amazing the, on this track. there, there is this track. a lot of uh full fighters vibe just like arnold said and yeah because they were influenced influenced by full fighters among other bands but, but yeah 
yeah, yeah. I, I do skip this track every once in a while. Like, I'm guilty for that. Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, uh, that is surprising to me because this is actually one of the standout tracks to me. I actually really <laughs> like this song. Hot take, uh, hot take, hot take. Hot oh. take. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, again, it's, the lyrics are what don't really work for me, but surprisingly, the lyrics are the favorite. I guess I like that little bit of yeah. bitterness in, in the track listing. Uh, I, th I think the chorus on this song is exceptionally good. Uh, the, the vocal melody on the chorus is possibly one of my favorites on the record. Uh, this one really sticks out to me. Uh, uh, yeah, so it, the overall, yes, it is a little formulaic. The sound is very similar to the past couple tracks. But I, I actually do really like this one. I, I like it a lot. I think this is one of those songs where the... Uh, the vagueness of the lyrics can kind of work. If I had to relate it to another song, it's like, a, uh, y'all remember the song, a You Oughta Know? Like, uh, you, you, you ought to know. <laughs> exactly. This is the pop punk version of that song. It's like a, you know what you fucking did type of song. And I can play, I, I can dig the, the, I can dig the lyrics being vague and kind of coy in this, in this track. I think this is one of the tracks where the, the vagueness of the of the lyrics, if you think about it in, in that context, it becomes a strength rather than a weakness. And I prefer to think about it that way because it makes the song that much more fun to be like, you know who you are and you know what you did. And I wrote this fucking song about you. And, uh, you know, so I don't know if that's the way it was intended to be listened to, but that's how I listened to it. And it made me like it. And uh, yeah, this is actually a standout track to me. So I'm surprised that, you know, for almost everybody else here, this was one of the weaker tracks. But, uh, hey, you know, we, take, we, we learned something new. We learned something new about ourselves on this on this podcast. You know, we're all on this journey together. Yes, we are. Uh, <laughs> next track on the record, Park View. Park View. Arnold, thoughts on this track? I will say I do like this track. But, wow! <laughs> there you go. It comes off with a. There's. I need to have a disclaimer to this though. To me liking okay. the song. Right. <laughs> okay. Here it is. Here it is. You, you get some heartfelt lyrics about their hometown, Flint, Michigan. Oh, okay, cool. Like, but the only reason I like this song is because it sounds like an alkaline trio song. You get kind of okay. some alkaline vibes in it. Yeah. Uh, okay. For yeah. Me. Yeah. And so I'm, am yeah. I using my nostalgia from Alkaline Trio into this song and liking it? Or is it just a good song? So it's kind of like, eh, eh, like, <laughs> is it good? So I, I'll say it's good. It's a good song, but only because of Alkaline Trio. As right. it sounds. And speak, speaking of Alkaline Trio, today is actually the 15th anniversary of Crimson. So happy birthday oh. to that record, which is probably my hey. favorite Alkaline Trio record. Awesome. Well, there's the shout out. <laughs> I hope they're watching. Uh, <laughs> Patrick, thoughts on Park View? Um, I love this song. It's fantastic. It's really fun. And you know how Arnold was saying that it sounds like Alkaline Trio to him. Um, this sounds like one of my favorite pop punk fans, which is the Ataris. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it has that vibe to it. I love, like, it has, you know, Chris wrote written all over it, and I love that. Uh, I don't know how many people like the Ataris, or you know, because Frank I and actually, I were talking about this. You do? I will, I'll bring that up later oh. on. <laughs> okay, awesome, awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's great. It has a great chorus. I think this song it it to me defines what the genre is all about. You know, it's fun, it's fast. You know, it, it it's I think it's great. So it's probably uh, next to Runaway is one of my favorite tracks on the album. Okay. Joel, thoughts on Parkview? Um, it's just one of my favorite songs of the album, hands down. Like, I guess Patrick just said exactly the same words that I was going to say. So, um, brother, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good song. It does have a, 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 um, an alkaline trio uh, kind of vibe. Never really um, thought of this before. It, 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 it sure does. I mean, like, I'm, I'm just thinking about it right just about now like it does sound like alkaline trio a lot it's one of my favorite songs i don't know i mean i guess um 
I pay very less attention to the lyrics on this song. I focus on the musical part. I really liked it. Uh, the chorus, I think it's very catchy. And um, yeah, there, there's another positive uh, comment on this album because yeah, as I said before, I, I really like this album. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Patrick just said it best. Like, yeah. All right. Thanks. Yeah. So I really, really like this song. And uh, uh, this is where I bring up the thing about how people say or how Fernando said that this was a blueprint pop punk record, like the blueprint for modern pop punk. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, even though these bands existed around the same time together, uh, I can feel like mid era wonder years can trace their DNA to this fucking track. This track sounds like what the Wonder Years eventually sounded like at some point in their discography. And I am a slut for the Wonder Years. I love the <laughs> Wonder Years. So the fact that this sounded like what the sound like this sounded like the beginning to what the Wonder Years would eventually sound like made me love this track. The chorus is it's fucking great. Uh so catchy. The shoveling snow part uh, yeah, yeah. And, and again, like as Arnold, I think Arnold mentioned, this is one of the songs where the lyrics, you know, they're they're kind of telling you a little something here. You know, they're talking about their hometown. They're kind of revealing some stuff that isn't so vague. About, uh, so vague. Yeah, <laughs> they mentioned some of their. Is this the song where they mentioned something about like their friends getting married or something like that? Like my friends are or something. Uh, I can't remember the line exactly. All I remember is shoveling snow. <laughs> yeah, me too. There, 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 there's a line that references, like, yeah, there, there, there's a line that references their friends moving on or something like that. And I'm like, yes, there it is. This is, you know, the, the part where you're kind of talking about the shit you're afraid of. And yeah, that's yeah. fine. It's cool. That's fucking relatable. This is the pop punk that I know and love. You know, Mid-20s, it's finally crisis. here. Oh. I, exactly. I pulled I pulled up the lyrics here, and the first lyrics are: "It's been four years, and I still don't know what I'm doing here. My friends settled down, and all I want to do, all I all I want to do when I'm home is sleep in. Like it's there I, exactly. I, there I, it is. There I, it is. I feel that so hard because like all my that's friends soupy, are like, dude. No. That's that's <laughs> soupy right there. Yeah, that's yeah. my boy. You know. <laughs> so this is the song where it find. This is the song that really clicked for me. That I was like, yes." This is, this is truly blueprint pop punk. Like this is, like every trope that pop punk would inevitably, you know, fucking beat to death in the next, you know, five to eight years. They're all here. This is the song that this definitely every other song felt like a template musically. This is the song that I was like, yes, this is a fully formed, you know, second era pop punk song. Uh, the lyrics finally connected with me on a level that I'm like, yes, I, I feel this. I get this. This is great. I love this. I really wanted the rest of the record <laughs> to be like this. You know, I, I wanted the lyrics to be as personal, as vulnerable as they were here. But... Let's get into the next track. Best I ever had. <laughs> Best I ever had. <laughs> All right, Arnold. <laughs> I will say, Best I Ever Had is uh, kind of more pop rock than it is pop punk. Um, uh huh. You also get some some more try hardy, uh, heartfelt lyrics here again. And I, I will say, I think around this time, this part of the album, you'll get better lyrics uh, than you would the the beginning half. And I will say, I do like this song, but yet. I have to give you another disclaimer. <laughs> I only really like this song because it sounds like it's something the Ataris made. So, <laughs> so is, and again, is it the nostalgia of listening to the Atari or is it the actual song? I don't want to say I like the song, but I do because it sounds like an Atari song. So yeah. uh, it's a pass, but... It's an Atari song. It, <laughs> that, that's that's how I felt it was. You know, <laughs> Patrick, thoughts on uh, best I ever had? Um, it is 
you know, like Arnold said, it is a pop rock track. It is an obvious choice for a single on this record. Like, if, yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, it's it's their top track on Spotify for a reason. I think that um, if there's someone who doesn't know the Swellers, you could show them this song and they'd be like, okay, you know, maybe I'd, I'd like to listen to this a little bit more. It's 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 a fun song. Um, so it's it's a good entry point. Um, I think it's a good end to the first half of the of the record. You know. Um, there's uh, this actually a part of the song, you know, after the first verse, after the first chorus, it says, I remember April 94, September 96, and every day of 99, whether I waited for those records or helped Seattle cry, it was the best I ever had, and I know we'll never die, which is great. You know, that's like, they're putting a little bit of something personal into that, of, you know, of them growing up, you know, listening to records that they love, and it's, you know, giving it the best that they ever had because of, you know, the songs that influence them and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's it's a great single. Um, n- not one of the best tracks on the album, but very, very catchy and, you know, very Atari-esque also. So, yes, Arnold, I completely agree with you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joel, thoughts on Best I Ever Had? Well, I know for sure this was the first single of the album. I think it's a very powerful track. Honestly, I like it a lot. Um, I think uh, they're actually referring to Kurt Cobain's death, you know, April 94. You know, I, I, I think I that's believe it. Believe that's, so. Yeah, that's that's the reference there. Yeah, and so, help Seattle cry also. Yeah, exactly. So I yeah. think that their insight is like, yeah, we grew up listening to all this cool music, all alternative 90s music. And it's sort of like there's the story of how they started to listen listening to good music. I don't know, man. I think it's very personal and um, I really like it a lot. It's uh, a great choice. Uh, it, it works fine as as a single. And um, yeah, I mean, overall, I think it's a very powerful song. I really like it. And that's, yeah, just, uh, it does sound like something that the guitarist would make. Yet again, I'm, I'm still, I'm, finally realizing that just now but <laughs> it's good it's good guys like I, yeah. I, I really like it yeah most of it, it gives it gives off those uh, good vibes you know like good courses it's i think it's it's what you know pop punk should be yeah uh, okay i like this track uh, this was at first this was the highlight of the record for me and it makes sense that this would be the single that this is their most popular track it is more of a pop rock pop yeah. rock song than it is a uh, a pop punk track uh this is what kind of caught my attention to listen to the rest of the album honestly what made me want to give this album a second listen because uh, up until this point everything sounded very you know pop punk and uh this was the standout the standout track to me to make me listen to it again and made me rediscover other songs in the record that i ended up liking more or that i connected to more mm-hmm. but this was yeah undeniably the song that that reels you in to really listening to uh you know to this album listen to the swellers and i'm gonna have to disagree with patrick on a point saying that this song gets personal with the lyrics again it's it's right on the edge of it like it tells you like oh this song that changed my mind (laughs) what fucking song is it dude (laughs) like you leave us right like you give us so many questions and no it's like what it's like okay imagine we work at, at an office together, right? And we're all by the water cooler. Now it's like, yo, I heard this song, dude. It's fucking awesome, dude. I love it. I love this fucking song. Shit. Oh, come on. <laughs> you, leave, you leave the water cooler. <laughs> and that, yeah, that's what, that's what this song did to me. It frustrated me so much when I heard, when, when I listened more to it. And I'm just like, man. Like, don't be afraid to name drop, man. Like, that's like, that's a quintessential part of the genre at this point. You know, I just wish they kind of went, you know, they, they kind of went to those places a little more, because uh, again, it, it it gets very vague. And if you're already gonna get to that point where you're saying like, yeah, there's this song that changed my mind, or this song I really like. I remember summer 99 or whatever the fuck like you're already getting up to that point just fucking go with it you know like <laughs> yeah tell us Same. the rest of the story like why leave us at that point you know uh, and that's one of <laughs> exactly 
And that's <laughs> honestly my biggest pet peeve about this entire record is is that <laughs> you know how the songs get you to that point where you're invested in the story, <laughs> like, oh, okay, what comes next? And they don't fucking tell you what's next, you know, like this. And uh, I I noticed that the most on this song, and with the damage. No, I mean with inside my head, where the songs where I really caught that, and uh, it, that's what kind of took me out of the record. But musically, such a fun song. The, again, the Swellers have the formula for writing a perfect sing-along chorus. Yeah, that get stuck in your fucking head, and they do it again in this track. Uh, every chorus so far has knocked it out of the park. They're all great. That being said, let's get into the next track. Uh, better things. I love better Arnold. things. Yeah. Arnold, your thoughts on the song? <laughs> you know, you could have just said, "Let's get into better things." Uh, <laughs> yes, good transition right but there. The thing about this better thing is that it's a bad thing. This yeah. song <laughs> is complete garbage. It's Julius no Caesar thumbs down. <laughs> um, you know, I don't like how slow we get how yeah it's, we slow down so quickly as we did like from the last song and then there's that tinge of acoustic guitar i don't i don't rock with that man yeah. i don't rock with that it didn't, <laughs> it didn't sit right with me and then also the song it like the drums i will say this like bothered me so much in the album just this song as the crash in the drums on the track it it sounds like i don't know what they did in post or whatever they did live. It just doesn't sit right. It almost feels like a churchy Christian rock drum. <laughs> like, so, <laughs> because of that, it's like, down. Like, you know, it's like, you're the weakest link, goodbye song. Bye. You know? <laughs> I, so, not, not good. Bad thing. Strong, <laughs> strong, strong Bad words thing. on that one. Uh, Patrick, thoughts on better things? Hard agree. It is the beginning of the second half of the record. And for me, this is where the record starts to, starts to drop off a little bit. Um, I mean, the vocals are good. Um, I really like that. Um, I really like the bridge in the song. I think that's one of the redeeming qualities of it. And the little solo that it has in the song, I really like that because it's a melodic solo. And it reminds me a lot of Weezer. And as you can see him. I love you. You can't because you don't have adequate lighting right now. I'm so sorry, but hey, we, you saw me earlier. So if you saw me earlier, you know. But um, it's just, it's not that great of a track. Like it's, it's a skippable one for sure. Like I, I totally understand what that, you know, churchy vibe. Like it's, it's too preachy for me. And it's thumbs down. It's, it's a dud. Oh, Ooh. thumbs down. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, please, please, please be, the, be the light in the song that we need. <laughs> <laughs> it does slow. It, it does slow down, like very Tremendously. quick. Like you know, from yeah, and but the lyrics are. I, I think they they approach like a you know. There's hope. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, like there. There's. I'm on my way to better things. That's like I don't know the main line of the whole track. And I mean, this song really meant a lot to me back in the day because I was like, okay, things are going to look up. Yeah, uh, let's keep the, the PMA, you know, positive mental attitude and uh, good things will come. But yeah, it's, uh, it, wouldn't, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't harm if the song was, um, you know, uh, if the speed of the song was, you know. Um, Picked up a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not so much of a slow song. Is it, I don't know. I do have bitter uh, thoughts of it. Yeah, I like it, but it's not 100% what I love the most of the album. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, I'm sorry. Uh, I have to say, I'm sorry for like, for like, I know it means so much to you. I just, <laughs> and I pooped on it, but I, I had to poop on it. But see no that's, worries, what, man. No that's, what, that's what this is all about. It's it's yeah. different. It's it's our different thoughts different and it's opinions. good. Exactly. You know, like, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say for me, I'm gonna agree with you. This is the weakest point on the album for me. This song just did not work for me. The tinges of acoustic guitar, 
felt really random, like very forced. You haven't heard that anywhere else on the album up until this point. I don't like the, the dual vocal effect that they use on the chorus. It also sounds very dated. sounds very 90s pop rock, uh, which it's weird that they kind of missed the mark on that aesthetic when they did so well on the last track, you know, uh, best I ever had had that nineties pop rock vibe and they killed it, knocked it out of the park with it. And they tried a different variation of that on better things and didn't work. And I want to like it because I want to like the positivity on the lyrics, but also, you know, the chorus here is one of the weaker ones for me. This is the one time that the chorus didn't really work. You know, Mm -hmm. If there's one thing that I could count on for every other song on this record was that the chorus was going to be killer. You know, every other song on this record, you're waiting for that chorus because that chorus is going to be fun. It's going to be catchy. It's going to be energetic. It's going to get you psyched. It's going to get you posse jumping, you know, everything. And you didn't get that on this one. I don't know. This one, this one was a misstep. You know, it's like it, it's like um, not every record needs a ballad. You know, it works well yeah. on some records like, um, let's say, like Infinity on High by Fall Out Boy. You know how all the tracks are high energy and then you get to Golden. But that is mm-hmm. that's a great ballad for that album. And it just it doesn't translate okay. well. And, here. And, and, and that brings me to another point. If you're going to put a ballad on the record, if you want to, you know, doing this mid tempo track didn't really work because yeah it does kind of fall flat the contrast isn't as you know there isn't as much contrast to make this a noticeable change you know if you're Mm -hmm. gonna go for a slower track then slow it all the way down and you know kind of give give off that hopeful vibe in a different way because the the mid-tempo the acoustic guitar the dual track chorus didn't really do much for me that this is the song that felt the most dated out of every other track on the rack on the record and all the other tracks wear their 90s influences on their sleeve pretty boldly but they managed to make it refreshing it manages it manages to make it work Mm -hmm. to make it sound modern in, in spite of its early 90s aesthetic whereas this song sounds like an early 90s song from some random ass band signed to like a local regional label <laughs> that was trying to be the next third eye blind and they didn't make it you know like that is Damn. what this song sounds like and, <laughs> and I, sorry and boys. i wanted i, I wanted I, to like it i i really wanted to like it but didn't work did this one yeah it, it was a misstep uh but Things pick right back up with the next track, uh, On The Line. Let's talk about On The Line. Arnold, thoughts about On The Line? You know, uh, from first listen to the song, you get somewhat of a Smashing Pumpkins kind of vibe in the first few seconds. Uh, you get some fuzz, some soft grunge rock with a, maybe a hint of pop rock in there. Um, it seems slightly out of place with, with like in the album, but if this was presented instead of better things, it would probably would have been a lot better. Like, the album would have probably flowed a little bit better. And then, also, if you present to me this on its own, I'd probably be like, hey, this is a band I'll probably try to give a listen to. And uh, But the rest of the album doesn't sound like this. Uh, this is a sound, though, they do sound like they're comfortable in. Like, I'm not sure if their yeah. other works so, so much, but this is something I think they're very good at. And this is something they should capitalize on you know this sound is is pretty unique and it's I, it's likable and you know i kind of felt like they should stay to this <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. okay uh patrick thoughts on on the line this is a pop punk record this is i i personally it's i'm not a huge fan of the track um like i said great riffs great guitars on it but it's just eh, you know the lyrics aren't that great for me um I don't know, like, you know, like Arnold said, if if they would have had an album of tracks like this, then yeah, maybe it would have worked out a little bit better. But for the fact that it's not and that, you know, they are trying to put their influences on their sleeves, you know, 
it does sound like the Smashing Pumpkins. It does sound like the Foo Fighters. And that's not what I want from my pop punk bands. You know, if I want something like, I want it to sound like New Found Glory. I want it to sound, you know, like the starting line or like Blink-182, you know. And it's just like, eh. Okay. Uh, Joel, thoughts on On The Line? This song is just okay. I mean, I don't hate it. I don't love it. It's, it's just okay. And it does sound like, um, you know, uh, Smashing Pumpkins. Pumpkins. I love Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah. Same. Uh, and I guess that's, it, it brings some sort of nostalgia and I'm like, okay, this, this is really good. Like, but like I said, I, I feel just in, right in the middle. It's a good song. It's okay, I guess. I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's just, I, but yeah, it does sound different from the rest of the record. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, so here's where I kind of differ because I love this track. This is the highlight of the album for me, honestly. I, I, love, the, I, I love the sound. I love the Smashing Pumpkins influence. I love the Foo Fighters influence. This is the Foo Fighters done right, I would say. Uh, very color and shape type of uh, uh, feel to it. And I love this track because, again, when you're comparing it to the grander scheme of this second wave of pop punk, you can kind of correlate title fight to this. You know, this sounds like title fight to me. <laughs> this sounds like, you know, that kind of softer, soft grunge with a pop punk edge sound. And like Arnold said, they sound like they're really comfortable in the sound. Uh, I'm also not very familiar with the Swellers. This is the first Swellers album I've listened to. Same. Uh, but if they chose to take their sound in this direction, they could be a great fucking band. Yeah. I, I, I love what they do with this sound. I love what they do here. If they're willing to kind of mix the two sounds, you know, give some pop punk breaks here and there on in this overall soft grunge, fuzzy, kind of melancholy sound, that's a winning fucking formula. And these dudes apparently are all about fucking formulas and they could not get out of the park with this one if they really wanted to. And yeah, I, I love this track, uh, but I'm going to insert an Arnold style caveat. And <laughs> I kind of already mentioned it, but I'm going to elaborate on it a little more. I love this track because it does sound like a direct ancestor to what title fight would eventually do. And I love Title Fight. Title Fight is one of my favorite bands. Uh, their two middle records, Shed and Floral Green, are fucking revelations for me. Two of my favorite records. I can listen to them cover to cover. And, you know, I feel like you can hear the beginnings of that sound on this track. You know, this track kind of has a rougher version of what that would inevitably be. And because of that, I love this track. So again, I love it. I, I want to say I love it on its own, but I also love it because title fight. And, uh, <laughs> and but yeah, no, this is the standout track on the record for me. I think this is the best song on the album. Hands down, this is one that I can go back to on its own. I can listen to this song, and I have listened to this song on its own. It's that fucking good. I love it. Uh, I have nothing more to say about this song. <laughs> uh, there's nothing more for me, which is the name of the next fucking track. Nothing more to me. Let's get into it. Arnold, thoughts on this? I've been killing it on the transitions in this yeah, episode. Yeah, good transition. <laughs> uh, I will say... Um, this song is nothing to me. Uh, it's, oh! just, <laughs> it's just another song that kind of fills the album. I will say the only thing I can really say about this song is, hey, you're kind of sort of tipping on the edge of modern rock there. Uh, it was like sunny, but uh, and you got a little hints of punk and pop in there, but doesn't quite do well and do anything for me. The song yeah. is just another filler song. And I will say, like, nothing more. <laughs> nothing more to me. <laughs> uh, Patrick, thoughts uh, on this track? 
I feel the exact same way. Uh, like I said, the second half of the record is not as strong as the first half. It's just, just doesn't work out too well. You know, like they're trying. I, I like this song sounds like they're trying a little bit too hard. You know, the lyrics are whatever, you know, it's a, if anything, it's just the music. The music's the only like defining quality of, of any of these songs. Cause like I said, I could care less about the words, you know, they, they don't really, I guess, work for me or it's nothing that I'm able to relate to. So, you know, hard pass. Mm. Uh, Joel, thoughts on nothing to me? This is nothing the first song. This is the first song on the whole record that I don't like. I skip it right away. I'm sorry. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I guess we all agree here. Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe actually, you, you know, no, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna well, actually, yes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, musically speaking, it's well done, um, but I, I really don't like it like as much as the other uh, songs that I really love on the album. So. And just like Patrick said, this um, second half of the album, it's kind of weak. Yeah, I, I'm the first to admit that. I still love it. Yeah, but this track, um, not so much. So I skip it right away. Okay. Well, actually, no, I'm kidding. No. Uh, <laughs> well, guys, um, <laughs> let, let me tell you a little actually, something here. Well, in well actually, uh, no, uh, yeah, th this track does feel like filler to me uh it's a competent track musically it's pretty good uh nothing out of the ordinary to me uh and i i've said this before on another record that we did but i kind of can't help but feel that it is the placement of this song that hurts it the most because it is a perfectly fine serviceable pop punk track but you're putting it right after what I think is the best track on the record, which is as also the most deviant from the norm song on this record. So you have like this completely out of left field and track uh, track on on the line. And then you go back to just, you know, by the numbers pop punk on nothing more to me. That really hurts it. This song on the first half of the record would still feel like filler, but I don't think it would stick out as negatively as it did if it was, you know, paired up with other songs that are in a similar vein. Put a pop punk song in a group of other pop punk songs. It gets lost in the sound, but it doesn't sound so out of place to the pat to the point that you notice that it's a weaker song because it's just part of this group of pop punk tracks. Once you put it after this song that is completely different, you know, on the line and I could almost argue that the next track after this really blow it out of the water. And yeah, it was put in the wrong place on the album. It really does kill the momentum of the second half, which is starting to slow down, starting to be, you know, kind of leading to the closing track. And it, it yeah, it, it felt out of place, which is hard to do on a record that sounds so uniformly like this why you would put it after the song that is the most different, I have no fucking clue. <laughs> you know, they, they really <laughs> fucked up on the placement. It's, it's the, the placement is what hurt it the most because outside of that, it's a fine pop punk song, you know, nothing to write home about, nothing special, but it's, it does what it's supposed to do. You know, it's a fun pop punk song. Put it on a pop punk playlist, put it anywhere else on this album. And it works. It works. It's it's fine. It does what it's supposed to do. Didn't work where they put it. That's the that's the worst thing I can say about the song, really. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's very forgettable. Uh, but that brings us to the next track. We're almost done with the record here. Prime Meridian. Uh, Arnold, thoughts on Prime Meridian? Uh, you know, Prime Meridian. Uh, it's kind of just a. Uh, easy tempo rock song. Um, it's it's okay. It's not bad. Uh, you know, another filler song for me. Um, you do have the the, the 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 heartfelt lyrics a little bit. Um, like there's maybe some feels in the song, but 
you know, I, I ain't feeling it in my opinion. So, um, yeah, I I believe this is the is this is the song about the uh, it's like a long distance relationship, correct? Um, I believe so. That's kind of yeah, how it so, reads. Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of like you know. Again, you can never really know. <laughs> it's, it's, too it's too vague. It's too vague. It's too vague. Exactly, it was too vague. It's like okay, you kind of hint something about clocks here, and then that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, if this was a prime rib, this prime meridian would be uh, well done and burnt, so not good. It's like the ribeyes <laughs> that they sell outside of the mall. Exactly. <laughs> All right, uh, Patrick, thoughts on Prime Meridian? Um, this was a great song when Dave Grohl wrote it 25 years ago. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's, a That's a shoot. It's, it's hard, <laughs> Foo Fighters. If there's any song on this record that they show their influence, it is this song, and it is Foo Fighters as fuck. And like that's, I'm not saying like you know that there's anything wrong with it because I I like the Foo Fighters. They're popular for a reason. So I mean, I guess I, if you want to get someone to like this band, show them that track. But I mean, it's just no another another thing that's not so great. But like yeah, like I said, Dave Grohl Dave Grohl wrote this song really well. <laughs> wow, that's a shoot right there. <laughs> Yeah, I don't blame Hoel if he wants to throw hands right now, dude. Hey, come on, dog. Let's no, do it. Right it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. No worries, man. Uh, Hoel, thoughts on Prime Meridian? <laughs> yeah, it, it sure does feel like uh, something a mid-90s alternative rock band would make. The lyrics are extremely big. I totally agree with you on the whole album, not not only in this track. Um, we don't know for sure if it's about a long distance relationship or it's about his dog. I, I, I don't know, man. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, overall, it's a good, it's um, a good track. I like it. Yeah, I like it. I I like this track. Not my favorite. I don't love it. I think this is a weaker version of what they tried doing with On the Line, which is really, uh, really go all in with those. Early to mid '90s aesthetics, uh, like you said, very Foo Fighters esque. Uh, I don't know; it, it lacked that spark that On the Line had for me, you know. Um, but I could see how it was trying to go in a similar direction, but didn't work for me. Not the way that I wanted to. I, I, this is one of those tracks on the album that I really, really wanted to like, just because, like I said. I feel like it shared some DNA with On The Line. It, it was very much a, trying to be a song in that vein. But, you know, I feel like On The Line was uh, lightning in a bottle. You know, you caught that one, you wrote it, it killed, it was great. And they couldn't really do it again here. At least not as memorably. They did a fine job. It, it's, it's not a bad song. Fine. It's not a bad song. Yeah. It just wasn't as impactful. And it's. I think... This is, again, one of those tracks where the vagueness of the lyrics is what hurts it the most. What I liked about On The Line was not only the sonic aesthetics of it, but there was some personality in the lyrics. There was some hints to there being more than just the, surfle, the, the surface level observations. And then you get Prime Meridian, the sounds are great. It sounds good, but you're back to kind of alienating your audience in the in the in terms of the vagueness of the lyrics. Had the lyrics been better, I would have liked the song more. It probably would have been another standout to me. Uh, again, the sound the songs where they really lean lean in to that '90s alternative rock, that soft grunge aesthetic. Those are the the songs where they do their best musically speaking that's what i really like that's where they really kind of let themselves flex their musical chops they get a little bit more creative it's not so not so pigeonholed into pop punk and and i think that's a problem not just with this band but many other bands in pop punk uh, a lot of bands you know there are some a lot of points you have to check to be a pop punk band i guess and a lot of people really just do you know color by numbers pop punk where they don't really deviate from those rules and it affects the overall work because it doesn't sound 
that different from you know another band and uh the best bands in the genre are the bands that are willing to kind of you know play around within the lines to make this hugely recognizable sound their own again the top bands in this genre real friends story so far the wonder years you know uh neck deep all of those bands play within the lines of the genre to still hit all the marks still be a recognizable pop punk band but still make it their own add something different i feel like the swellers didn't really do that everything they did was square in the line of pop punk but they really allowed themselves to be creative in these you know 90s tinged alternative rock songs so when i heard the instrumental to prime meridian i was really excited because i thought they were going to go in that direction and they kind of did musically but lyrically they didn't you know they failed me on the lyrics on this track which is why i couldn't like it as much as i wanted to and yeah those are my thoughts on the song but i feel like they redeemed themselves on the closing track let's get into it warming up thoughts on this track arnold uh, you know, this song, it's a pretty okay closer. Um, I feel like maybe something like along the lines of a catchy chorus, like that's included in like the song Inside My Head, maybe that would have been a little bit better here. Um, or if they kind of like tweaked around a bit. Uh, I do get a very Pinkerton era Weezer on this song. So, uh, but that being said, I will not say it's a good song because of the nostalgia. It's kind of just another filler song that and the, that closes the album um so it's kind of a hit or miss uh, i would say more of a miss than a hit uh so i w- i would say you know okay closer is is this the song that has that like melodic solo on it i believe i believe so, so yes yeah. Weezer. That's that's where that pinkerton <laughs> influence comes from yeah so there's a lot of yeah that pinkerton influence like i like Pinkerton and the Blue Album. Those are the only good albums that I like from Weezer. Sorry, Patrick. <laughs> you uh, fucking, you purists, man. Like, really? <laughs> oh, my God. So, and, but even with that, I don't like the song like I did, like, the other songs with Alkaline Trio-esque or Atari-esque sounds. So, eh. <laughs> um, uh, Patrick, thoughts on I, this song? <laughs> I like it. Um, I think it's it's a great way to end the record. Um, it is probably the best song off the second half. I love that melodic solo on it. Um, the vocals Bold of are- you to pretend that On the Line doesn't exist. Ah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Foo Fighters are great, but I love Weezer, so... <laughs> and see, like, that that's one of my favorite things in, you know, pop rock and stuff like that is... I love guitars. I love guitar solos. But if you're able to have a good solo that goes with a melody that works well, then it just it, it hits the mark for me. You know, it, it brings out something in me. Um, but I think that if they would have just, you know, been themselves and not really not really tried so hard to, to be something else and, you know, just have fun. But um, it's it's a really good closer and it's the best song on the second half. It it ends the way that the record starts you know good energy so it's a thumbs up for me sorry arnold okay (laughs) Uh, (laughs) so it is my it is my favorite song of the whole album i'm sorry arnold (laughs) okay Uh, i agree i agree with patrick um it's uh it's a good closure song i uh i really like it it's um definitely the um, the strongest song on the on the second half of the album, and it does end the way the the album started. And um, I think it's really powerful. I like the melodic guitar solo. Um, I like the way it starts with a, a, a snare drum, kidding like right away. I don't know, man. I just really like it. Um, it works. <coughs> sorry, it works good on it on its own. Um, and um, I don't know. It's, it's overall, it's my favorite song of the whole album. Um, I really love it. Thumbs up. Good. All right. Frank. Okay. So, 
I am a stickler for album closers, and I I feel like I am very very demanding with my album closers because I've been spoiled. I am a huge fan of Jeff Rosenstock, and that motherfucker knows how to close out an album perfectly. That dude bats a thousand on album closers for his entire discography. So if I say I love an album's closing track, that means is a to me it's a great fucking song. And I'm gonna say this: I fucking love warming up. Sorry, Arnold. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you guys are all apologizing to me. <laughs> it's uh, it it works to close out the album. I like how it kind of slows down a little bit. Uh, I think the cheat code to writing a perfect pop punk, pop rock, power pop punk closer Sound like is Weezer. to have is to have a chant at the end. And when the when the song ends with the chant of "You are good for me," I'm fucking sold. That's it. I'm loving it. <laughs> Throw yeah, the. Yeah. That's it, you know, like, so, yeah, uh, powerful ending, just, you know, evo- evoking all of those emotions just by that chant, which managed to do what nine other tracks preceding it didn't do, which is give sense to the album. It made, <laughs> it finally gave you an idea of what this album is, why it's called what it is called. What is the overarching sentiment of the album? And is, you know, this relationship and all this stuff. You are good for me in spite of all the bullshit that we may be, we may have gone through or may be going through. You know, finally it wraps up this theme that has kind of been missing over the course of the entire fucking album. <laughs> you finally hear it here and it makes sense. And I love it. I like that. Fucking love it. Uh, like I said, I'm a stickler for album closers, and this one definitely, definitely knocked it out of the fucking park. Uh, This made me give the album a much more favorable opinion in hindsight. You know, like, this this song... Yeah. This this (laughs) song kind of... This song just really made me grade the rest of the album on a curb because of how good this closes out the album. I can't sing its praises enough. I love album closers. I think albums live or die by their opening and their closings. And again, this album had some very stiff competition. It had Jeff Rosenstock. It had The Wonder Years. It had, you know, uh, Title Fight. It had all these other bands that I love to kind of, you know, I never really review an album in a vacuum. I don't, like, I do find myself comparing it to similar experiences, albums that are in a similar vein. So comparing it to these albums that I love that are in similar genres, ending-wise, it's right up there with them. It closes out as good as any album that I love. And... Yeah, I I love this song. I love this as a closer. Yeah, man, fucking great track. My hats off to it. I all right. I'm all about it. It's a I'm great track. Yeah. So sorry, Arnold. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all good. All, good. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, let's get into final thoughts on the record. Uh, now that you you know you came in here with your own opinions. We've gone through the gauntlet of talking about all 10 tracks together. Now that you've heard some different points of view, uh, what are your final thoughts now at the end of all of this, this journey that we've gone on together? What are your final thoughts on the record? Has your thoughts changed on certain tracks? How are you feeling now that we've gone through all of it? Arnold? All right. Well, um, so let me just give my summary of the, <clears throat> of the album. Uh, you know, this is, album is my intro into the band. And uh, I, from what I gathered into searching the band and listening to this album is this band seems to be a no gimmick, you know, band, which you, you get a lot of gimmicks when it comes to pop punk. Um, but this band does has does not have a gimmick. And this album is a consistent punk pop sound, uh, to which they seem to do well. 
Uh, they have some meaty guitar and some pa- potato-y drums. Uh, <laughs> most of the songs, in my opinion, are just okay and don't do much to, uh, to add. Then just add to the pop punk or punk pop sound. They just, they just fill it. They just kind of fill it. Um, some of the songs I do like, I'm wondering to myself, am I liking these songs because of nostalgia? Because, you know, my time listening to Alkaline Trio, the Ataris, Weezer. Um, what, uh, what this band does do right is play along the lines of pop punk, pop rock, modern rock, punk pop. Uh, but they don't add anything unique. Uh, the only unique thing you get is On the Line, which is a good fuzz rock. And maybe they should stick to that realm of music uh, because they do a good job. Uh, this album feels to me as if like uh, you're adding a serving of corn to an already full plate plate at Thanksgiving dinner. Um, it adds to the library or it adds to the plate, but you don't look back at your meal saying, "Hmm, man, that corn choice that was the best part." <laughs> no, you don't, right? Uh, in fact, in fact, you don't mind leaving some on your plate as you throw it in the garbage. Um, the most it did for you is it just fill you up. Um, in this album, the corn does play a role when it's mixed in with the mashed potatoes or the gravy, but it needs the mashed potatoes and or the gravy, which is the other people's songs. Um, so, you know, I will say I'm never going to listen to this album again. These songs are just, if they're in a playlist, maybe I won't skip them, but I probably will because they're just kind of vague. Uh, so, you know, for my TLDR, Too Long Didn't Read, I will say this in the scale of pop punk albums, like if you're tiering, doing a tier list, this is the Little Mac, the Little Mac of pop punk. So if you understand Smash Brothers, Little Mac is the shittiest fucking character. So wow. this is definitely like wow. bottom tier <laughs> pop punk album. How, how dare you, Arnold, talk about <laughs> Little Mac like that? <laughs> Not even the album. Like, yeah. <laughs> you fight for the honor of Little Mac? <laughs> Come on, man. He just wants to be the champ. Come on. <laughs> All um, right, uh, Patrick, final thoughts on uh, uh, Good For Me. It's, I, I agree with Arnold on most of the points. It, it's, it's, a good, it's a good record. It's fun. You know, it's, it does what it's supposed to do. You know, like I put it on and it's, you know, I'm not going in thinking like, oh, what's the deeper meaning of this record? You know, it's just I listen to it for the fun of it. You know, it has some really good tracks. While the second half may not be as good as the first half, you know, it. I will be going back to some of these songs. And, you know, this is the first Swellers record I ever heard. I'd never heard this band before, but I do really like them. Um, I'd like to study their discography a little bit more and see if, you know, maybe they perfected that sound. Um that they were trying to go for, or maybe like they started sounding more like the Foo Fighters or something like that. But it's overall, it's, it's a good record. I wouldn't place it, you know, like one of my favorites of the decade or anything like that, but it's, it's interesting, you know, I'm glad that I heard it and yeah, I'll definitely go back to it. So yeah. And little Mac doesn't suck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joel, final thoughts on this record. Yeah, well, it's it definitely helps to you know listen to other people's opinion and um, to put things on perspective. You know, I still love this album. I still consider it as one of my favorite albums of the decade. It it has a bunch of influential um, in me, like uh, the music, the the instrumental uh, part of the of the songs. I really like him, you know. I, I consider uh, the Swellers as one of my my um, my influences um, when it comes to writing pop punk music. Um, they were never a household name. Uh, they, even though they were signed by Fueled by Ramen, I don't, actually I don't know wh- what went wrong. I mean, you, you were the same label as Paramore, as uh, Chin Class Heroes, Panic at the Disco, and and yet you never made. Uh, a, a huge impact um and maybe this i don't know i mean I, uh, I don't know i don't know what went wrong I, I i think they um they deserve much more attention and to be studied i don't know just to see uh what what would what i mean hold on a second um, 
<laughs> I don't know. Take what they did right and and use it, and also take what they did wrong and don't do it. You know, because if you wanna start a, a band and you want to your band to make it big, you know, look out on other bands and see what they did right and what they did wrong. I think these guys uh, did a lot of things right, but at the same time uh, made a, made a lot of bad decisions. So. Um, that's not. That's why we never heard of this other as, as a big band or a household name band. You know, overall, I think uh, my thoughts on this album have changed. Yeah, but I still love it. I still think it's a great album. I still think it's a great band. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys should definitely check out other albums to see if they evolve their music, their sound, or um, if they experience uh, a, a growth on their lyrics or on the structure of the songs. But overall, I think it's a good song. Yeah, I, uh, a good song, it's a good album, good band. I love it, yeah. All right, cool. So um, <clears throat> my final thoughts on the record, um, I couldn't get it out of my head, the thought that, you know, this is blueprint pop punk, right? Um, I So I keep going back to that idea that this is, this came out in 2011, so. Like I was telling Arnold, this means this album was probably written, uh, you know, late 2009, early 2010. So this was definitely part of that new era pop punk Big Bang. You know, this was one of those albums. So as a stepping stone album, I think it makes a lot of sense. Because again, this sounds like a lot of earlier versions of the ideas that the bigger bands in the genre now managed to to perfect like i said this is the only solar's records i've heard so i don't know if they kept you know if they caught up with the other bands and i keep referencing them you know neck deep wonder years real friends story so far all those guys you you can hear some of the ideas laid out on this record you can hear it you can hear those ideas in all these other bands but done better you know, so as a stepping stone album, as an album that kind of set the tone for, you know, the shape of pop punk to come, I can see its influence. I can see its significance in, in you know, pop punk culture in, you know, in the scene. I can see how it's important in that, in that sense it, when I view it in that context. As a standalone record... I, I like it, but I, I did want more out of it, especially in the lyrics department, because again, compared to some of their contemporaries, I, I can't connect to this album lyrically the way I do with other pop punk albums. And I understand, you know, when people think pop punk, they think, you know, fun records, because, you know, at its commercial peak, pop punk was a fun genre you had simple plan blink 182 some 41 you know all those <clears throat> bands that their entire shtick was to be fun goofy guys but i think a lot of people gravitated towards the new era pop punk for the vulnerability for the relatability you know this emo pop punk crossover is what i was expecting out of a record such as this and I didn't get that as much. Uh, so I can't say that I love the record. I can say that I like it. On the Line is a song that I will revisit constantly, you know, for years to come. Uh, warming up, great closer. But um, I wanted more out of this record. I really wanted more so that I could love it. Uh, it has everything that i love about pop punk except what is the most important thing to me which are the lyrics i i i'm very very big on lyrics also one thing that makes this band stand apart to me a lot of pop punk bands even in this newer era of pop punk have very nasally vocalists <laughs> to hear a dude that doesn't sound like this all the fucking time <laughs> that was kind of refreshing don't you know? don't take shots at green day <laughs> So that, that was refreshing for me. But um, overall, I like the album. Uh, yeah, Arnold, let's get into it. Uh, let's give the albums a rating. 
Uh, it could be out of 10 or out of 100, however you want to do it. Arnold, uh, what, what do you give it? Yeah, uh, what, what I'm going to give this uh, a 30 out of 100. So, uh, Oof. yeah, but, you know, maybe if I listened to this in 2011, I could have given it a better score, but I'm, we're not there anymore. So, uh, sorry, I can't give it more than the 30. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, Patrick, well, what, what do you give it? I am going to give this record a five out of 10 because like I said, there is some great songs on here, but not everything is too great. You know, like what Arnold said, if I would have been what 18, 19 while listening to this album, I'm pretty sure I would have loved it a lot more, but I'm a bit older now. And it's just, it's just not as, as great as, um, as some other of their contemporaries and stuff like that. But I do, I do agree with what you were saying, Frank, it is, it's a stepping stone for the genre and for the scene for a dying scene at that point, you know, and it's, they did something good, but the bands that came after that perfected what they did. So it's good for what it is, but it's not, it's not amazing. It's nothing to write home about. Get up kids. Go for it. <laughs> I love get up kids. Good. Great reference. Good reference. Uh, Joel. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Like, um, I used to give this album um, 85 out of 100. After today, I'd say I give it 80 <laughs> out of 100. I still love it. I, re- I still love it. But, uh, but you know, like, uh, uh, putting things in perspective after this, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I love it because it it, 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 it is such a stepping stone to the genre it was refreshing at the time and i feel like i feel kind of nostalgic you know like i i, I would listen to this album over and over uh week after week so i guess that's why i, I still have it um you know on, on the high score but overall i like it i love it um there are some tracks that um that i, I would skip yeah for sure and uh but yeah i mean i i think it's uh great band that they deserve uh, uh, even more attention for whatever reason you know if you want to see him as a blueprint band for uh, next generation's pop funk bands or if you want to see him as a stepping stone band i don't know man uh for whatever reason i think they um they deserve much more attention than they had back in the day mm-hmm. so uh yeah a 80 out of 100 i really like this album and yeah that's it awesome all right okay so I am going to give this album, um, I'm going to go a light to decent, to decent six, a light to decent six on this album. Okay. Uh, I can't, again, I cannot separate the context of when this album came out and what it means to the genre from the album. I, I don't think albums should be reviewed in a vacuum, especially on a show like this, which is called Hindsight where we use hindsight to dissect the cultural significance of an album, right? So in that regard, uh, as a, I can't separate the idea of it being a stepping stone to the bands that revitalized pop punk. Um, and that makes me view it in a favorable light because, again, the ideas on this album aren't bad. They're, they missed the mark on a few of them which is why i can't rate it higher uh you know the 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 highs were high and the lows were low you know what i mean uh but, <laughs> yeah uh, but um uh yeah what they did for the genre what they did for you know molding the overall sound that later bands would come to perfect uh you know for being a you know somewhat of a prototype record it's not that bad you know, it, it's not as rough as you would expect, you know, a burgoing pop punk band to be. Uh, like I said, the highs were really high, which is a part of the reason why I'm also rating it so highly. On the Line, Warming Up, uh, Runaways, all of those tracks really do make me love, you know, make me like this record more than I would if these tracks weren't there or if these tracks didn't carry as much weight as they did. Uh, but yeah, uh, like the decent six, it's a good record. I do want to look up the rest of their discography, see if they improved on these ideas because 
they have all the right tools to be a successful modern pop punk band. Mm -hmm. They just got to step their game up a little bit. And I'm really hoping they date on other records. So that's, that's that on that. That is our discussion on the swellers. Good for me. Uh, Sorry, Joel. I know you love this record and we kind of, you know, we, we gave it a little bit of a beating, but, you know, we, no we're all about, we're all about being honest and yeah. giving our yeah. honest takes on these albums. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, again, yeah. we're not going to deny its significance, you know, uh, it's an important record. Could it be a little better? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but That's it, it does what it does. It did what it needed to. Yeah. And now that we've reached the end of the show, uh, we do our plugs. Anything you guys need to talk about? We do have a special announcement. Yeah. Uh, so normally I'm the one that goes last, but I'm going to go first on this one. If you have been listening for a while, you've mainly been able to catch us only here on Facebook via the live stream or the recorded videos afterwards. But thanks to our homies on Aliens on the Border, we are now on all streaming platforms. Uh, we are hindsight 2020 under the Aliens on the Border network. So Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, wherever you listen to your podcast, uh, look up Aliens on the Border. You'll find us there. Uh, all our previous episodes are there, including our supplementary shows like our interviews, the get to knows. And the brand new segment that we debuted this, uh, last this past week, which is uh, uh, Hidden Treasures, and our other supplementary shows will also be on there. And every main episode of Hindsight 2020 will also be there. So if you guys want to go back and listen to our opinions on these records, check us out there. Uh, so yeah, do you guys have anything else to plug, Arnold? Yeah, uh, I'm actually wearing Hoel's design right now, the mic drop shirt. Um, so yeah, I uh, wanted to plug that. Uh, we will be soon on YouTube. These recordings, if you like the YouTube platform uh, instead of the Facebook, a uh, Facebook platform, uh, will be on that. Also, uh, in the descriptions of the YouTube videos, uh, you'll find us on to whatever streaming site uh, you stream your podcasts. So if you want quick links there too. Um, but other than that, YouTube.com/slash TimeBombVids. Uh, we'll be updating it pretty soon. All right, Patrick, anything you want to plug? Um, not necessarily, but I just want to thank my fellow panelists. I want to thank everybody that's watching. You know, this is a really fun thing to be doing. I think it's great that we're able to share our thoughts on music and hopefully expose people to things that we love and, you know, give a better view on who we are and our, you know, our musical tastes and stuff like that. So, you know, I just want to thank everybody and like, especially thank you guys. You guys are great. I mean, Frank, you suck, but I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and also uh, Ar yeah. Arnold, how do you look like a young buck? Please tell me. A young buck like Nick or Matt? <laughs> uh, Nick? I think Nick. <laughs> it's the hair, man. I, 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 mean, I need a quarantine cut, you know? Hey, you no. don't need it. You are perfect the way that you no. are. Wait, brother, wait, brother. Wait. Shut the fuck up. If you're going to do a quarantine cut, bring back the sixth grade bowl cut. Let's, let's, let's get Arnold with a bowl cut again. Oh, man. No. Joel, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, anything you need to plug, man? Well, uh, thank you guys for reminding me. Thank you for having me. Um, you guys are great. Um you guys really helped me to put in uh, perspective on this album. I still love it. And um, yeah, um, I make graphic design and illustrations. If, if you guys ever need um, any of that, uh, hit me up. Um, there's that. Uh, and Frank and I, uh, we have a um, weekly webcomic called The Honor Kids, and it's going very well. Um, check it out every Friday or Sunday. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, <laughs> uh, you can find it on uh, facebook.com slash the anarchid 666 uh, it's just a little comic if you like comics and punk rock we just kind of poke fun at some of the stereotypes in the scene or uh, just you know little jokes about bands we love so if you guys are into this and you'd rather read a four panel version of what it took us a whole 90 minutes to say <laughs> uh, check out the comic 
and yeah, uh, if you need any graphic designs, hit up Joel. If you like pop punk, check out either of the two bands that he either was in or is in. I never really know. Uh, I don't uh, even ship know. Has, uh, ship happens. In vignette. Uh, his solo project, Ander, is also really good. And so, most recently, Dan Taylor, which is a fan from here to Monterrey. Also, Rey, so yeah, Dan Taylor. Yeah. So yeah, check out all those projects. If you want to hear Arnold and I on our bullshit, uh, listen to Quest Texas. No. I think it's on our... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think that's kind of it for the plugs. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you guys had a lot of fun with us. Uh, I say this a lot. We do encourage interaction with our viewers. If we talk about a record that you guys have listened to, feel free to comment about it. We want to hear what you guys think. We want to engage with you guys. If you guys have a record y'all think we should talk about, hit us up in the DM. Slide into the DMs. Let us oh, know dang, what boy. Is, and we'll try our best to fit it on our, <laughs> on our schedule. And uh, <laughs> thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, it's a lot of fun to do this for all of y'all. I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys pick up some cool new music along the way. And uh, stay safe out there. We love you. Thank Bye. You. Right. Thank you, guys. Yeah. All right, I'm in.